Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm Cynthia. And we're the Han Yee family. Okay, first I'd like to speak on the situation that happened to me today. Well, not to me, but to somebody else, but I was in the middle of it. Uh, I was taking the bus home after work, and I was just sitting there. It was about 4.20. We were almost at Trinity Common. Uh, and this uh, black kid gets on a bus, just a young kid, has his uh, mask under his nose. So one of the people on the bus, uh, a white older gentleman, I want to say gentleman lightly, um, started berating him, telling him to put his mask up. Now, here's the kick. There were five other people who didn't even have masks on. So that bothered me, and you know I was a little shocked that it was going on. Uh, and he continued to do this until somebody actually, you know, a lady actually stood up and said, "Would you just leave him alone and shut up, or get off the bus?" And uh, you know, then he got to his stop, but he kept on berating the kid and even challenged him to come out and fight with him. Now, and that's the thing, just because it was a black kid. It's ridiculous. I'm telling you, I mean, that's the only reason I can I could even imagine that he would have done that because, again, there were f at least five other people not even wearing masks. Most of the other people were barely wearing the mask. Like some of them had them down under their chin. Never talked to them. But he saw the black kid, he went for it. But yet the bus driver says nothing. Nothing at all. He just, he sat in his freaking cabin and didn't do a thing. So... It, it pissed me off. Like, you wouldn't believe. And I wanted to do something myself, but I was just, I don't know, it was shock or what. It just, I, I didn't, I didn't react because I was thinking I should get up and challenge him myself just because. Because, you know, those guys are all cowards anyway. He would have just ran off the bus anyway. I should have done it, but I didn't. Yeah, well... I mean, people like that aren't worth really getting into any trouble over, but at the same time, the bus driver, that should be his job to say, you're disrespecting other people on this bus, you need to leave. Yeah, that's true. And honestly... Sit down and be quiet or leave. Yeah, honestly, if, if the kid would have gotten off the bus, I would have gotten off the bus. Well, yeah. Because then he'd be, that older gentleman would be dealing with me. Because he's just a kid. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it's just terrible. I mean, we have to be better than that as people, you know? Absolutely. I mean, I always tell my kids, treat other people the way you want to be treated. Do you want to be treated like that? I don't think anyone does. Yeah, no, it just, you know? it made me crazy. And honestly, for a second, I even felt, I felt weak just standing there, not doing anything. Yeah, well, I mean, you don't always react in the moment, because like you said, you were kind of shocked that this was even happening mm -hmm. you know what i mean that happens sometimes and then you feel bad later thinking i should have done something or said something yeah well what's that next time maybe hopefully i have you know the balls to stand up it's not that right? just okay. to say something because i mean it's just it's such an awful thing and, and there's so much more of it these days yeah it's and just not right we can't blame people of other ethnic groups for our troubles and we no. can't and we can't berate them every time we don't every time we see them because oh they don't look like us i we mean i'm tired of it yeah absolutely anyway on a lighter <laughs> note please a lighter <laughs> note I, I just i wanted to get that off my chest yes honestly. absolutely it, it made me mad it made me crazy and it made me a little mad at myself afterwards so mm. yeah anyways to the lighter um, stuff yeah on a lighter note we wanted to share with you some of our musical background what we like how we came to love music as much as we do i suppose yeah um myself i started out i was singing at my dad's house parties with him since i was about three years old he'd get me up to sing with him at parties and stuff at the house and then as i got older i got really interested in doing music and I started taking vocal classes and joining choir and it, anything I could do to sing really <laughs> and of course years of karaoke yes lots of karaoke lots of we karaoke. just we always liked music I mean uh, as a kid I mean I, again three years old 
I took over my dad's uh, home stereo, uh, his eight track. And, you know, I, I was better at using the machine than he was. I, I, I knew so I knew the, the, the tapes so much that if I, there's one to four on the thing. There's, the older people will know what you mean. <laughs> you'll know what I mean. One to four. There's four, tra there's four tracks you can go to, right? So, yeah. So I would press play, I don't know, shove the thing in, there's no play. I'd shove the cartridge in and I would wait for a certain point in the song, a certain beat in the song, and I knew where it was and I'd press the, the button for two or three or whatever, wherever it was going next, and that was exactly where the beginning of the song was was that's that's how concentrated I, I was on that that's how well I knew these tapes I played them so much yeah and after that um... after that I got into you know you know my father bought a better stereo uh, he got records and cassettes and, and it just became even easier for me to play music so I just got better at it and I loved singing when I was growing up and you know just alone uh, I never had the opportunity like Cynthia with uh, you know singing with my father because he didn't sing <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know I just took it from there when I got in when I got older I got into uh, you know DJing it was, uh, it was like 12 years old I decided that I didn't like the music that everybody else was playing so me stereo and offered to play for everybody you know, for money, of course. Of course. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just started my DJ business. I was 15, and it was fun. And then you took an audio engineering course. Yeah. Well, I mean, before that, I was in a couple of bands. I oh, think yes, that's that really true. what inspired that me too, to, yeah. to do the audio engineering thing was that I joined a band when I was 18 with my friend Kevin. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> and... Uh, we did some stuff with a couple of guys. Uh, Jason Hanley was in one of the bands that, that I was in, AJ. And, um, and uh, Mr. Drew Smith and Andy Loge. That was my first band. And it was my uh, little brother, Jay, who played drums. That was my first, you know, really, you know, go for the money band, you know? Yeah. And uh, we did all right, you know. Uh, we did covers. It wasn't great in that sense. I mean, we weren't going to be famous or anything. But uh, after that, it was a few years later. Uh, I was just working at Subway, and Kevin called me up again and said, "Hey, you want to join a band with this native guy?" And I was like, "Yeah, of that's course. interesting. <laughs> sure, <laughs> of course." And I sang backup for the Red Ochre Band under George Paul for four years, yeah. and. That's when I got into the audio engineering bug because we recorded an album and I was like, oh, this is fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I got into that. This is where I am now is. Well, when you. I went to here, college. I went to college and did all this stuff. Yeah. And uh, then, you know, I came here and uh, I didn't get into the audio business right away. No. But sometime later, me and her decided that we need to do something. We enjoy karaoke. Just for fun yeah we'd always go uh, to magnums on the weekends it was mm -hmm. great and um, we decided that we wanted to do it so um, somebody you know called us you know, a friend of uh, Cynthia's mom and uh, asked us if we wanted to be part of it and we said sure you know we didn't get paid much but we had a good time and uh, we, we played a couple of bars and in the area, you know, kind of honed our singing skills a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. Now, and we stopped for a while. I mean, it just became too hectic and we had a bunch of stuff going on. So I just, we just kind of went, yeah. We'll, yeah. Just, we'll just enjoy the karaoke scene from, you know, an outsider's perspective for now. And, yeah. But we do like to entertain and we are going to be continuing to entertain now, doing things mostly on YouTube for the moment. Mm hmm. Um, Sorry, it's very warm here today. It's extremely hot in here. I'm sure everybody in Ontario knows it's extremely hot. So yeah, yeah. yeah. We're so just sweating. We're doing, we're oh. doing our best, just sweating and sweating <laughs> and sweating. So 
Anyways, so we just thought we'd like to give you a little bit of uh, our background and what we know about music. Uh, we're really in love with music, which is why we're kind of gearing a lot of our fun stuff towards musical. Absolutely, yeah. And don't forget Friday's trip up the DJ. Send me your requests, please. Mm -hmm. And like and subscribe to the channel, because that's always a good thing. <laughs> All right. Later. Later.